Hello, everyone. Very much welcome to the introduction to the International Relations and Diplomacy Program. In this uh, introduction, I'll take you first through a couple of core characteristics of the program. We'll talk about several items like what does the program do look like, what are the entry requirements, and at the very end you will get uh, an insight of someone who's very crucial at the moment for the program, Natalie Scheller. She will be introduced a little later. Core characteristics of the program. So the program is offered um, as a collaboration between the Faculty of Governance and Global Affairs and other partners at Leiden University. It's run by the Institute of Security and Global Affairs in The Hague. And the partners are the Institute of Political Science in Leiden and the Netherlands Institute of International Relations Klingendal in The Hague. It's a two-year program, ambitious in nature, also very international. We have interactive formats, which really means that students come to class prepared, they've done the readings, and it's more like an exchange than a lecture top-down format. We have a lot of extracurricular activities, you'll hear more about that, because it needs to be more than a program. It needs, it needs to be more than just the courses in a program, it needs to be a real active program with many additional activities. We also have an internship, <coughs> The internship is a mandatory part of the program, and we do have support to try to locate an internship that people really want to do. It's a bit competitive out there for the good internships, so good coaching is crucial. We have a dedicated support team, two coordinators, that actually bring with them uh, knowledge in the field that's related to international relations and diplomacy and knowledge in higher education. This is crucial for the program to run smoothly. We, as every program, have to go through accreditation. Last time, this was for this program in 2018, we were very, very happy to get this label, which of course is a good outcome, but it also means that the program is really trying to keep up to those standards. The program, what does it look like? Here, in a nutshell, uh, you get an overview. This can change a little bit from year to year. But the core aspects are introductions in international relations. Uh, some people coming in already have a background, so they get a bit more challenging uh, questions in those classes. Uh, a class on the EU and the UN. Uh, then we continue with courses like introduction into diplomacy, negotiations, conflict resolution, then also the um, research method training courses, like qualitative research methods, quantitative. Uh, this will be very important also for the last part of the program. Several electives, so again, this can change a little bit from year to year, but you see some of the courses uh, being offered at the moment by various teachers, also colleagues from Klingendal. Then we move at the end of year one into the internship phase, and again, well, personally, I think it's fascinating to see where people go, how many different places, how many different cities, and it's all possible again after COVID. Then year two, uh, we start with an international law course because that's also crucial for the program. Several electives again in the second year, then a core course on international political economy, research design at the same time, which really prepares students along with the next research design course, uh, for the actual master thesis at the end of the two-year track. Now, next to the courses. So courses tend to be demanding. It's an advanced program, so we really expect people uh, to be very focused on the courses and on the coursework. Uh, the excursions, that's, of course, always a lot of fun. Here you see some impressions of excursions uh, with the group to Brussels, to the institutions in Brussels, uh, and very often we invite alumni to join us um, in the hotel and give presentations uh, to our students about their experiences in Brussels. Uh, this is Geneva, same story. This is usually in the second year of the program. Uh, here, obviously, the Palais des Nations and the whole group in front of that, we go to the several institutions in Geneva. Also, many events indeed where we just try to have people connect with persons that have already gone into the professional field. The own alumni, of course, are a 
very nice source for that. The program has been running since 2003, so there's quite a few people around in different positions. Here, this is a snapshot of a so-called reconnect career event uh, that we think is uh, very valuable for students in the program. Career perspectives, uh, in general, this is a pie chart approximately of where our people have gone. Uh, you'll see that quite a large share goes into like the public sector, including actually ministries of uh, foreign affairs. We also have a pretty large share actually, around 20% that went into education, research, um, in a broad sense, uh, many have gone on with PhDs and then started an academic career themselves. And we've also had quite a few people in international organizations, uh, some in NGOs, quite obviously, consulting, think tanks. That's another cluster that's pretty large for us. So this is approximately the uh, percentage shares of where people have gone after graduation. Entry requirements for the program. So it needs to be a bachelor degree from a recognized university. It can be political science, international relations, international law, public administration, economics, sociology, history. And I should add, it can also be another discipline. But what's really core is the demonstrated excellence in prior academic education. And to be honest, it's even a little more applicable for those that come in with a totally different background. So you really need to have a good track record. Usually, and maybe that's helpful for you to know, if you translate it to the Dutch system, you have to look at a 7.2 minimum in terms of average, and in the international system, usually B+. There are some grading differences in universities. That's why it's not a clear criterion, but this is the approximate threshold that you have to look at. Then, of course, English proficiency, absolutely important. The program has a quick paths, you have to really be able to participate, uh, to pick up the discussions, uh, to uh, contribute to those. So English is very important. Now, what is required in terms of application documents? Well, a motivation letter, two letters of recommendation, and one at least should be from a former university that you've attended, and of course, your CV. The tuition, this is approximately what it looks like. It changes from year to year. It's higher than the regular fees because of the nature of the program, also as an advanced program. And it's applicable to both EU and actually EEA and non-EU EEA students. So this is uh, uniform. Uh, look for, at the website for the most important update information on this and start looking early. This is really the advice I can give for scholarships. We are admitting on a rolling basis, so people can already get accepted, let's say, in October for the next academic year. And if they're accepted, they can already look for scholarships. And again, on the web page, you get some links where to look. So usually the admissions deadline is on the yeah, 1st of April. Um, it's not a joke, it's true. 1st of April uh, of the academic year before you want to enter. You also have the right, by the way, if you're admitted to defer to a next academic year. Now here, this is the email address. If Please look first, obviously, at the website, at any kind of information about the program that you can find. But if you still have specific questions left, then please look at uh, uh, this email where you can potentially ask your very last questions. M-I-R-D at FGGA Leiden University, NL. Now, this is, of course, in a way, the fun part, I would say, of this introduction. Again, we have Natalie Scheller, and I'll maybe say, you saw in the overview that we have an organization, it's called International Relations Study Association, which is very closely linked to the program and to the program management. People are elected. And I have the honor and pleasure to introduce to you Natalie Scheller, who is currently the president of IRSA. Here we move to her presentation. Thank you so much. So I'm definitely very excited to share with you all a couple of highlights that I found during my time in MIRD. I think one of the most notable features that distinguishes MIRD from other master's programs is how it really combines a very rigorous academic experience that's complemented by these opportunities for practical training. And one of the chief areas where you see this is Leiden University's partnership with the Klingendel Institute. 
This partnership really allows students to kind of learn one-on-one -on -one firsthand from practitioners in the fields of diplomacy, negotiation, and mediation almost every day in the classroom, which is really fantastic. In addition to this partnership, though, there's also opportunities for practice-based training throughout the entire academic year for two years in a row. One of these examples is the International Negotiations class, which is actually taught by the Klingendel Institute. Here, students are able to sharpen their own negotiation and mediation skills in partnership with these practitioners throughout a series of pretty intensive simulations, which is really exciting. We also have the series of elective courses throughout the two years. That's really fantastic because it gives students the opportunity to dive more specifically into those areas of interest that they have. And of course, during the internship period, students can take the skills that they've learned in the classroom and then apply them to a professional context and get a bit of a better idea of the type of jobs they might want to look for after graduation, which is really fantastic. Now, in addition to this backdrop, we also definitely boast a very close-knit international group of both students and professors, who also maintains a very strong connection with our very extensive network of alumni. And this type of relationship is really great because it means that we really foster a close-knit, cohesive group of individuals who collaborate on a range of international relations issues, ranging from both theory to practice. The two-year timeline of the program also really helps set students up for success in their professional fields later on. Because the program is two years, students have plenty of time to explore new academic interests, really strengthen their existing ones, as well as make very meaningful connections in the professional field before they even begin their thesis trajectory or job search, which is really great. And finally, because students are here for two years, they also have the chance to properly settle down in The Hague, make new friendships, and make really meaningful connections, which is the perfect backdrop to a program like this. And then finally, Professor Hosley spoke a little bit about the International Relations Study Association, also known as IRSA for short. And IRSA definitely plays a really important role in the day-to-day -day life in MIRD. Like the professor mentioned, we are the study association for MIRD. Now, all students of MIRD are members of the association by nature, but they also elect between six and eight representatives every single year to represent them to the program. These positions include the president, vice president, alumni officer, treasurer, two first-year representatives, and newly this year, the alumni and events officer assistant. Now, IRSA's role is really to serve as this channel of communication between students and the administration. So we are responsible for taking student feedback, you know, information about students' academic interests and needs, and bringing that directly to the program so we can advocate for students' needs and interests there. And then we can really create positive change for years to come. In addition to this, we also organize special events and initiatives for students. This includes items like our mentorship program between the first and second years, study trips to Brussels and Geneva, as well as various academic and social events throughout the year. So IRS is definitely a really big role in life in MIRD. And now I'll hand it back over to Professor Hosley. Yeah, this was a fantastic way, I think, of <laughs> framing what the life of the person looks like in their practice. Uh, Obviously, we are enjoying kind of the contents of the program. And if you're interested to join us, have this close look at all the requirements and apply early. Thanks very much. Thank you.